So hello everybody, my name is Paul and I own BestStuffToBuy.com and I have a number of little companies, uh, one of which is involved in some travel. And as an entrepreneur, like many people who watch these videos, I travel a lot and I find places to go that I find exciting. But the problem is always, what do you actually pack in your bag? I mean, what do you, I mean, there's a lot to think about when you go over to a foreign country. Sometimes it's a very different culture and very completely different. You have to be kind of self-contained, resourceful, have what you need, but nothing you don't need. And it's always a really big challenge. And over the years, I've come to narrow down what I think is really, really important. And I'm going to go through uh, what I had on a recent trip here on the table here. I used a Canu K4L backpack. It has a laptop carrier, and I'll show it to you in part of this segment here. And there's a lot of stuff that you can either make a mental checklist or watch this video, think of your own things, but definitely take notes because there's a lot of stuff that you need to take and there are some things, of course, that if you forget them, forget it, you're not even going to get on the plane. So, thanks again for watching. Okay, now as I indicated in my introductory remarks here, this is about traveling to a foreign country perhaps, or at least quite a bit of a distance. You're going to be on an airplane for a while. Maybe go through a taxi and transfer bus and so on. So you need to have a very compact way of carrying some very, very essential things when you travel. And what I use is a small backpack. Uh, I actually use two, one smaller than the other. This one is the model uh, Canu Adventure K4L. And I reviewed this in another segment. But in there it has a lot of room, protection for your camera, some space for a lot of different things, including a place for a laptop. Now, of course, there are some really, really important things that you actually have to have when you travel. One is you're going to need some money, and you're going to need some ID, and you're going to need your passport. And so, just by all means, have this stuff on the top of your mind. And when it comes to money, I personally recommend that you put at least one of the credit cards and some money in a separate place. Maybe you're traveling with somebody. Don't have it all in one wallet or one purse. Have it two or three things. I've learned a lot from aviation and one of their uh, things that they stress is all about redundancy. Have plan B. Have a backup. So you get your wallet and your ID and you ain't going nowhere without this stuff. So put that in a really good place. Now there's things that you can do, for example, and you can use such a, something like this, which is a money belt. And I found this to be very successful. Put your name and ID on it here. Have an identification in there, so in case something gets lost, you might find somebody nice and return it for you. But in any case, you can put the, something like this in there and have it right next to you. But I don't recommend, actually, when you're going through your the gates, uh, for example, to keep your passport in something like this. Have it more available uh, have very close to your body, perhaps in a, in a thing that hangs around your neck. So once you get through the gates and you go into the plane, then you can tuck this away in a very safe place. So, again, your money. Now, you wanna, you're want you going to be needing to be somewhat entertained. If you're going to be on an airplane for a long time, you're going to want maybe a book or a Kindle. I take the iPad. The iPad is fantastic. Well, you can keep between a few things here. You can keep yourself busy on long intercontinental jets and many of the even long distance in, the, in one continent. They have places near many of the seats where you can plug in. Now, often they have a USB or they have a 12 volt or 120 volt or whatever. And you can take your cables with you. Now, otherwise you just charge your batteries, take some extra batteries and, you know, get old fashioned. Take a book along. Something like this. And I recommend, by the way, a lot of people make the same mistake I've made on trips. You say, oh, I'm going to take some books. So I'm going to be gone for three weeks, but you take ten books and no way you're going to read ten books in those three weeks. You're going to be busy. So, but you do want to have at least one or two. And I have now one real book. And I have on my iPhone, there's another couple of books here. And I also have a Kindle. A lot of people like these things. This is the older version. I don't use it very often, but there's a lot that you can do with this and you can actually mark things so there's research that you can do, you can download PDFs, you can write stuff yourself and Kindleize it. So something like this is very useful. Now as far as your gear is concerned, 
get a cover. You gotta have, don't use the iPhone or the iPad, just this flimsy thing. I use a really good solid cover. This one is a nice one that has a keyboard, a wireless keyboard, so I can use with my iPad. And I often put a big rubber band around that. Fits really nicely in my pack. Now, again, something to carry your documents in. You're gonna want like contact places. You wanna know, you want some phone numbers. You want some notes that you're taking perhaps and maps and things like that. So get something, you know, when you're traveling a lot, things get messed up. So have something to protect your paperwork. Stick it in the back here. I got a slot back there. A little bit of a flashlight. Maybe a telephone that's going in a foreign country. You can travel now. You can go, I got this in Thailand for like $40. And I can go back there and use it every time. I can just, it's still got some minutes on it. And I can just get a new chip in there and so on. So get yourself a little phone like that. Now, you're going to want to have some markers and pens. You have to fill out forms if you need a stylus for your iPad. Make sure you get a nice one, by the way. This is a Griffin has a really nice solid writing uh, section here, so I use that. I suggest that you have a little container like this for some things. You know, you, you, sometimes you're in water or you're in a situation where you might get wet, so something like this can protect like matches or a lighter or other things like that, you know. Don't forget to bring all your chargers. I always take an extra one. This is my Kindle. I take two for my iPhone and iPad. Now, my iPad, my iPhone, I have a OtterBox case on it. This is a great case, man. You stuck this in there like that and put it on your belt, or you can put it the other way. You can put it on a table and you can make yourself a little TV kind of thing. So, this is the case that I use. Make sure you have a flashlight. You'd be surprised how many times you'd like to have a flashlight when you're in a taxi or get someplace at night and it's in the plane, you drop something between your seat, you gotta look down there, so something like that is always handy. Earplugs for sure, extra batteries. Here's another kind of flashlight that I like. It has a little flashlight this way and it has a red thing or a blinker. So this is good for emergencies or you're taking a walk um, to get attention. I have a 35 millimeter camera that I don't usually take on any trips, but this is the kind of case I use for it. A very good case, made of a neoprene, a very strong, uh, protect you, very lightweight. Don't forget to take maps and things about the country that you're going to. Here's about Thailand. There's maps and some basic language that you can say, hey, I know where I'm going and when I get there I'm going to enjoy it more. Magazines are great things to carry with you. If you have a specialty like me for flying, you don't find these kind of magazines usually at the newsstands. I grab a few. They're always nice. You're standing in line. You're waiting. you got a few minutes. Hey, catch up on your reading and inform yourself. Something else you might want to have is one of these luggage uh, weighers. This one here, you connect to your bag. And believe me, if you're over, you can pay a stiff penalty. So you kind of want to know the dimensions of your luggage and what you're actually carrying. Um, a shawl is always good. I like to have a little shawl because the planes can get cold and the dinky ones that they give you are ridiculous. So I get an extra shawl and I feel very cozy. And by the way, I dress in layers on the plane because when you have extra layers, you get all nice and warm and cozy. You're going to sleep well because airplanes are cold, cold. A little extra rope. This is not necessary, but sometimes you need to tie up something with bags or whatever. It helps to have a little hand rag again. Uh, something to carry papers and documents. I usually take a notepad. Um, and then it comes down to some other kinds of gear. You want to have your extra batteries. This is a fun thing to have, which is a little wind meter and thermometer for some kinds of adventure travel and so on. You want something like this. It's very inexpensive and you can tuck it in your pack. I take a nice compass with me and a tripod holder for my camera and some other little gizmos and gadgets to connect 